In this video, we're going to look at another numerical method to solve Maxwell's equations, which is the eigenmode expansion method. Now, this method is not as uh, general as, for example, the finite difference or the finite element method, but it has one thing going for it. That is, if you use it for structures where it is designed for, then it can be extremely efficient and, and very fast. But it's not a general purpose method. It's really a method that only works specifically for a set of structures where it can really exploit the physics of the problem and therefore be very, very efficient. Now, what are these mysterious, mysterious structures for which uh, eigenmode expansion is very well suited? Well, it's basically cake. It's a layer of different uh, structures forming a certain cake of layers. And each of the layers in this cake has a reflective index profile, um, which does not change in a certain direction which we're going to call here the propagation direction Z. It's basically a sequence of little waveguides here. For example, if this is a high refractive index region and that's a low refractive index region, uh, the, the non-cross hatched regions, it's just almost very obvious that this is like a, a sequence of waveguides, but in general, just a sequence of layers where the refractive index profile does not change if you propagate along Z here. And that's a situation that's very well suited for the eigenmode expansion method, as we will see later on. If you're not working in a situation where your structure can be naturally expressed as a layered cake, like for example, a structure like, like this, and if you really want to use an eigenmode expansion method, if you're desperate, then in theory you can, but then you need to have some sort of staircasing approximation where you uh, approximate this curved structure uh, by this uh, square uh, approximation here but in that case the method will not be as accurate um, and, uh, and as efficient but if you're working in structures like this uh, which occur a lot in integrated uh, photonics for example uh, dbr waveguides the interface between two different waveguides uh, then your method is uh, very well on place here the eigenmode expansion method okay uh, how does it work? Well, we're going to start with the very basic building block of the method, which is in essence an interface between two waveguides here. So we have two layers of a cake and we see what happens if you move from one of these layers to another way, layer. So let's call the first layer one and let's call the second layer uh, imaginatively two. And we're going to excite this structure with a certain field uh, like this. Um, and that field will, of course, result in a certain reflected field and in a certain transmitted field. But the magic of the eigenmode expansion method is, and perhaps you have already guessed from the name here, is that we're going to expand uh, our field uh, using as basis functions the family of the eigenmodes in that particular uh, waveguide here. So I'm going to symbolically represent it by having a sum of the, uh, the eigenmodes. Now, since each of these layers have a refractive index profile, which does not change in the Z direction, they are waveguides and they therefore have a set of, uh, of eigenmodes. Now you can show that these eigenmodes actually form a complete set, which basically means that for any field here, you can indeed write them as an infinite sum of, uh, of eigenmodes. And moreover, if we're going to uh, simplify things by putting our structure into, for example, a perfectly conducting metal box, then we will also have a discrete set of eigenmodes such that we can have a sum here and, uh, and not an integral. Okay, but um, this is the philosophy. So the fields in this layer, we're going to expand into the eigenmodes of waveguide one and the field over there, the transmitted fields, we're going to write that as a sum of eigenmodes in layer two. And because the eigenmodes are very much related to the physics of the problem, uh, this means that it's a very clever choice of basis functions and therefore hopefully with using only very few terms we can get a very uh, accurate uh, approximation of what's going on in the, uh, in the physics of the problem here. Okay, um, so what we're going to do next is figuring out what happens if we excite an interface like this with only a single eigenmode of that first layer. So let's say we excite this with an eigenmode with index P so a single eigenmode, and then that result in a certain reflected field, which is a sum of eigenmodes in layer one, and a certain transmitted field, which is a sum of eigenmodes in uh, layer two. 
But before we do that, uh, there's something we need to figure out, which is uh, related to the, the relationship basically between the forward propagating eigenmodes in a certain layer and the backward propagating eigenmodes in the layer. So this will result in some sign changes of some vector components, uh, but there's an exercise related to that if you want uh, the details.